Lately, when I tell someone that I'm in the midst of publishing my fantasy series and specifically the unusual thing called a serial series, I get all kinds of questions and the same ones over and over again. So I figured I'd record a short, hopefully short, video answering the top 10 questions I've been getting about my series. This way I can be like, I am so glad you asked. Now watch this video. Usually the conversation goes something like this. I'm sitting with someone, maybe a friend, and they ask me, so what have you been up to lately? So I say something like, well, actually, I have just started publishing my fantasy series that I've been working on for over like three years. So that's pretty exciting. Whoa, you have a book series coming out? What's it about? Well, first, let me ask you, do you like fantasy stories like Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Peter Pan? Yeah, sure. I mean, who doesn't? Okay, how about young adult books that have misfit crews like Six of Crows or fairy worlds like The Cruel Prince? How about faction systems like Divergent or high stakes competitions like Hunger Games? I don't know that I've heard of all of those books, but I definitely like some of them. Great. Well, then you might like my young adult fantasy series called On Wings of Ash and Dust because it takes place in a vast fantasy world with five fairy clans that all have different kinds of wings, one of them being dragon wings, so who doesn't love that? But all of these clans are currently on the brink of war over which clan should rule the rest. In the midst of all that is my spunky pixie pirate Quinn who doesn't want anything to do with the clans because of her dark past. But when her twin brother suddenly dies after entering a competition for the fairy crown, she seeks revenge. Yet she ends up getting entangled in the same dangers that claimed her brother's life and ends up facing off with four other impressive powerful challengers, a mute beast tamer, a half-blind artist, a flirt merman and a pompous princess. But when an ancient prophecy entwines their fates, suddenly rivals may have to become allies before there's no world left to rule. Cool. Okay. Sounds pretty awesome. When does it come out? Well, the first episode is already out on Amazon and on Kindle Unlimited. And the second episode of the serial is on pre-order, but it comes out next week. Wait, 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 hold on. Episodes, serials? It's like you're speaking a different language. What did those even mean? Ah, yeah, okay, let me back up. I've talked a lot about serials on my YouTube channel, so if you wanna find out even more, I have a whole playlist on there. But in short, you know how a normal book series kind of feels like a movie series, but in book form? Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Cool, so a serial then is like a TV show, but in book form, where it's a series of shorter novels that are fast released until the series is complete. For example, instead of waiting for a new book to come out in a series, say like every year or so, my serial will have a new episode release every two weeks. Wow, that's fast. Tell me about it. But again, like a TV show, readers are experiencing a shorter episode, which still has a beginning, middle, and end with like a little cliffhanger at the end to like lead you into the next episode, of course. But the beauty of it is you don't have to wait forever for the next installment. Cool. Okay. I like that. But how short are we talking about for these episodes and how many are there going to be? Well, to complete the first season, there will be a total of six episodes, which are like a short novel or novella. So like 25 to 30,000 words. Novella. You're speaking a different language again. Okay. Um, 30,000 words. Is that a lot of words? Okay. In print, it's probably like 150 to 200 pages. Okay. Yeah. That helps a little bit, but I guess I'm asking how long does it take to read each episode? Sure. That's probably a better way to explain it. Well, my readers so far have finished episode one in as little as a day and as long as two weeks. Ah, I see why you're having them release every two weeks. That totally makes sense. Now I kind of want all of them on my bookshelf. I'm getting excited. Well, actually all of the episodes are only going to be released as ebooks for now. Only ebook? Why? Paperbacks will come out eventually, right? I mean, what if somebody doesn't have a Kindle? Do you have a smartphone? Doesn't everyone these days? Well, great. All you have to do is download the Kindle app and you can read my book directly on your phone. Oh, that's handy. But seriously, physical copies, you're going to have them eventually, right? Well, since these eBooks are kind of on the shorter side, if I was to print them all as physical books, they would kind of be all like skinny minis, unless I played a lot with formatting, which I thought about doing. But right now, since this is my first time publishing ever, I wanted to make sure I could do it really well. And trying to publish six eBooks and paperbacks at the same time, I just felt like I would totally stress myself out, especially because I've heard working with Ingram Spark for paperbacks can be a little bit of a headache. Plus, then I'd have to hire Hillary to do full wraps of every episode, which would be pricey for me, but also pricey for my readers because paperbacks are usually a lot more than eBooks. So at the end of the day, I was like, let's be kind to myself and my readers and just stick with eBooks for right now. Wow, that is a lot of really good things to consider, but 
You did say for now though. I did, and that's because sometime after all the episodes are out, what I'd really love to do is package them all into one physical novel called On Wings of Ash and Dust. Ah, I see what you did there. When do you think they will actually be out? I'm shooting for the end of 2021 or the beginning of 2022, but honestly, I'm just trying to get through publishing all the eBooks first and do that well. What I am suggesting for some people is you might wanna try the eBooks, get the first one, see how you like it, and then if you decide, mm, I really wanna wait for the paperbacks, then you can always do that too. But what you will miss out on is I'm doing actually book-related activities and challenges online as the books come out the next few weeks. And there is specific artwork that's going to be on each of these episode covers that won't be on the cover of the physical book, although I am thinking about putting them sort of as part dividers in the book, kind of like Six of Crows has, where the illustrations will be grayscale, kind of like this. Oh, good. I really like all the covers with the different characters. Who did the art, by the way? So I follow a bunch of artists on Instagram and eventually came across Hilary Barden at Re Barden and just fell in love with her work. I actually did a whole in-depth video about why I decided to go with illustrated covers and how I found Hillary more in depth and what the process looked like from like sketch to final product for episode one. But working with her was amazing and she was so patient with me as we did each cover, which as you can kind of tell, features a different competitor and a different fairy clan. This is because throughout the series, the fairies travel to different parts of the world for the different trials of the competition. For example, Palace of Potions takes place in the self sky city, which you can see in the background of episode two, and then the Sylph competitor is featured on the cover. Then the sixth cover will again feature Quinn for the epic finale. When I'm ready to release the paperback though, I'll have to go back to Hillary and be like, okay, let's figure out if we can get all of the characters on the cover somehow, or maybe the back cover. I don't know, we'll see. Nice, okay. But then do we stay in Quinn's perspective for all of the episodes in the whole series or do we jump to the different characters' perspectives? Great question. So yeah, even though a different competitor is featured on each of the covers, we definitely stay in Quinn's perspective the entire time. I just really wanted to show off all of the competitors because they're pretty cool. Your fairy clans sound pretty unique and interesting. Can you tell me more about them? Sure. So each fairy clan is distinguished by three main basics, what type of wings they have, where they live in the world, and what their highest value is or what I'm calling an etho. For example, Gwillians have dragon-like wings, they live in the mountains, and they value strength above all else. Whereas sylphs, they have bird-like wings, live in the sky, and value knowledge above all else. You can actually find out all about them in a video I did all about my fantasy world, but what's super exciting is if you want to find out which clan you actually belong to, I have a quiz on my website, sort of like a personality like Hogwarts house quiz that sorts you into your clan and you get to find out a little Little bit more about them. That's so fun! And are these fairy types inspired by different other kinds of fairies you've seen before or are they totally your own? I got the fairy clan names by looking up fairy lore, so there's some similarities. Like nymphs usually have to do with water, but my nymphs take it a step further as they have like a mermaid slash a merman form that they can take. That's awesome! So this story sounds pretty intricate. How did you keep all these details straight in your head and how did you go about plotting the storyline? To keep everything organized, I really loved using what's called a series or story bible to just put all the stuff about the world and the characters. But when I started writing this story, it was actually a full-length novel first and at the time I was using Save the Cat Writes a Novel, which I love, but when I saw that the novel could naturally break up into the different parts of the competition and thus become a really cool serial, because of the TV show nature of serials, I actually started studying how to write a TV show, specifically using Shonda Rhimes Masterclass at masterclass.com. And eventually I had this like hybrid of like save the cat and then I what I learned from the masterclass. And this kind of serialized outline is something that I did a whole video about as well. Wow, I think my brain is starting to hurt. That sounds hard. Definitely hard, but definitely worth it. Through it all, I worked with my developmental editor and I also ran it through some really amazing beta readers that tested out the serial nature of it all. And after they loved the format, I was like, okay, let's do this. So far, it seems like my other readers are really enjoying it too. And actually one of my art team members wrote a whole blog post about it, which was really awesome. Okay, you've got me invested. I totally wanna dig in, so remind me again, where can I start reading the episodes and when will all of them be out? 
Sweet. Well, right now you can get episode one on Amazon and pre-order episode two, which comes out next week on August 17th. Then a new episode will come out every two weeks. So that means that the last episode will come out about mid-October. And if you have a Kindle Unlimited account, you actually get all the episodes included in your subscription. And the books are on Goodreads and BookBub if you want to add them to your currently reading or want to read lists. And a big reason why I really wanted to do a serial with fast releases is to actually really engage with my readers as they read the book, sharing behind the scenes, answering their questions, hearing their fan theories, seeing them root for their favorite competitor. And similar to the competition in the book, what I really wanted to do and what I plan to do is to run some book themed activities and challenges because the readers will basically be experiencing the competition almost in real time as they read and as the episodes come out. For example, episode two centers around the first trial, the trial of knowledge. So after everybody starts reading that episode, what I want to do is host a trivia game about the series so far and I'm thinking the winners will win early copies of episode three or discounts to my merch store. Then when episode three comes out that centers around the trial of beauty and so I thought it'd be really fun to host a challenge where people create fan art or cosplay or poems or songs all about the book and the winners win similar prizes. Whoa I really like the interactive aspect of this story. How do I make sure that I don't miss out on any of the fun? Well making sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and following me on Instagram will definitely get you a lot of the updates. But if you really don't want to miss the thing, I would definitely suggest subscribing to my author newsletter through my website because then all of the updates and everything we're doing will come straight to your email. So exciting. I'm going to sign up right now. Okay. Imagine having that conversation like a thousand times. It's a mouthful. But I hope that cleared up a bunch of things and if you guys have any other additional questions, put them down in the comments because I'd love to talk with you about the series even more. I'm off to finish prepping episode two for next week's release, but I hope you guys will join the read-along because it's going to be so much fun. And if you want to check out any of the videos or resources I mentioned, I will link them all down below and here's a couple that you can start off with. Thanks so much again for watching and we'll see you next week for Palace of Potions release day.